Native is back at it here to give everyone another Dexter Season 2 episode review video. Before I get into that though, pretty important if you aren't caught off to the point where I am and rewatching or watching Dexter or you're just not entirely sure, then you definitely need to take the initiative and pay attention to the episode's title, which of course I'll mention as well as put in the description for you. If that happens to be the case and you're not caught up, it would be my recommendation that you don't watch this video any further to avoid any potential spoilers. This will be Dexter Season 2, Episode 7. The title of this episode is called That Night, A Forest Grew. And this will be my review, reaction, recap after finishing watching the episode earlier today. Starts off with Dexter and Lila having sex again. They seem to be doing a lot of that in Season 2, which is always nice. Nudity is always a nice thing. And Lila is actually telling Dexter exactly what to do and how she wants it. And Lila says, I hope... You don't mind. And Dexter says, I've always found instruction manuals to be quite useful. Me personally, I never read instruction manuals. If I can't figure out how to do something, I YouTube how to do it or Google search it, but never manuals. I don't have the patience to read things anymore. And then they decide to go at it again. I think this time it's Dexter's turn to tell her what he wants done to pleasure her the best, I think. Gail tells Rita to stop moping and wakes her up as she's been sleeping in quite a bit lately because of the breakup with Dexter. And Deb asks Dex Dexter if him and Rita fuck quiet, as Dexter always shows up at the apartment all quiet, and she doesn't even hear him come in, so she wonders if they fuck quiet uh, as well. I don't know why Deborah would even ask that question, but she did. It is what it is. And Deb thinks Rita's really something. I don't know why Rita's really not that special. My opinion... Batista talks about a manifesto the Bay Harbor Butcher sent to the Tribune. Dokes and LaGuerta go to another crime scene. Dokes says LaGuerta is backing a fucking freak tart. And Camilla stops by Dexter's lab to let him know that Dokes was asking about those uh, same 1973 files. She says they're in lockup at the, in the basement at City Hall. Lundy is sure that the Bay Harbor Butcher won't leave DNA on a document, so he doesn't go to the Tribune to do forensic stuff on the document or anything like that, because he knows the Bay Harbor Butcher is way too careful uh, with that. And then Lundy asks Dev if she has any Chopin on her iPad, iPad and says, Shit! Deborah is excited. Lundy just swore. Dexter says the stepdad, Mr. Wilson, is telling the truth. And then Dexter says the shirt needs to be collected for evidence. Dexter has to sell an innocent man down the river to get rid of Dokes. As he tells Dokes there's misting on the shirt, which is the cause of bludgeoning. Lila has sold some of her art to a buyer and wants to celebrate. So Lila and Dexter have a special dinner. They This place is really booked, so they say that he proposed to her there long ago. And they can't ruin this engagement dinner of sorts. And they're able to con the workers there to get a table and a bottle of champagne, which is always a good thing. And then Dexter hasn't thought about... Uh, using or killing for a week. Gail is helping Cody with a Saudi Arabia presentation for school. And then Gail is being a huge control freak when it comes to the kids, as far as making them do all these extra tasks and having their homework done, like Astor's homework really early done, like a week early or something like that. Um, interesting stuff. And then Gabriel and Deb are working out on the treadmill and Gabrielle is uh, rambling to Deb while she's working out. And Deb is actually listening to Chopin and completely is ignoring Gabriel. I don't even think she knows he's actually talking. She might, though. And then and then uh, Deb goes to Dexter. Deb goes to Dexter's at night instead of Gabrielle's. And Lila is there and says the famous line, Pardon my tits, and then covers up. And then says, we thought that you were going to be uh, crashing with uh, at your boyfriend's house tonight. And Deb obviously does not like Lila, thinks she's a skank. And we turn to page two. 
Look at all this crap I write about Dexter. This is, I need an easier process. I should, honestly, I should start typing these up and just uh, copying them to a external hard drive. Because it's a lot easier to read when I have them on the computer versus the piece of paper when I, I write so small sometimes to fit everything on the paper and then I can't read what I put. And then I have those moments where I don't say anything for a couple of seconds and go, what did I put? Because I can't read it. Anyway, most of the station is still analyzing the manifesto. Dexter puts the blood report on Dokes' desk under a few other files. And then Lundy figures out uh, Deb's been listening to Chopin. Dexter says, why are we questioning Mr. Wilson? He's innocent. Tells LaGuerta that he put the blood report on Dokes' decks earlier yesterday before he left. And then LaGuerta goes in and in the interrogation room and says Mr. Wilson is free to go. And Dokes is like, what the hell? I'm questioning a murder suspect. He's innocent, James. The blood report's on your desk. And then Dokes finally realizes, son of a bitch. He's good. Very interesting things to come with Dokes. So Mr. Wilson is is free to go and that's actually the dad that played in pet cemetery dale midcalf or something like that um i have a friend that's obsessed with him and wants to meet him and he always cancels conventions at the last second so i just happened to catch his name when the episode was played i'm like oh shit that's the guy from part pet cemetery the first one the the original from 1980 whatever year it came out Gabriel wants to have sex and Dev says she's just not in the mood. In fact, she says she wants to break up due to the fact that, well, it's not actually said here, but Dab is actually in love with Special Agent Grandpa. I mean, Frank Lundy. That's a Masuka line, Special Agent Grandpa. Or maybe it's a Quinn line. No, no, I don't remember. No, I, Masuka does say it at one point. I know that. And then uh, Dexter and Lila break into a house to make love while they're on a walk because they want to get it on so bad so Dexter uses his skills to get into this house and they just take care of each other in a random house where anybody can come home at any given time and then Lila puts a bath bathrobe on and says look I'm a rich old person and Dexter's like take it off uh we're pushing our luck as it is wow that's very interesting uh, not very careful for Dexter either he could have easily got caught and somehow been con connected to something else while doing that and then Cody actually calls Dexter because he's scared about his report about, you know, regarding Saudi Arabia. And Dexter thinks he, he'll he he'll go to Cody's school because Cody invites him for the, the presentation. Rita says she found out that the school fired Gail about a year ago. And then he tells her mom, and then she tells her mom to shut the fuck up. Rita says she has to leave in the morning. So Rita snaps, which made Rita a lot more interesting in this episode, at least for that moment. And then we have a Soderquist uh, cameo as Batista is rambling to Dexter. Dokes is actually in Dexter's lab when Dexter gets to work and confronts him again. He says that he'll always, Dexter tells Dokes that he'll always be one step ahead of Dokes for one simple reason, I own you. And then headbutts Dokes and then kind of walks out like nothing happened. And then Dokes, of course, comes running out of the, the lab and tackles Dexter. He hits her, his head on like a desk and he's all bloody. And then Batista has to pull Dokes off of him and it makes Dokes look like a fucking psychopath. It makes Dexter look super innocent there. Smart move by our main character. Way to go, Dexter. But man, I love Dokes. Surprise, motherfucker. LaGuerta asks Dokes for his badge, his gun, his ID, and everything she can ask him for and suspends him. Batista asks Dexter what the hell happened. I actually put ask Dokes, but no. He asks Dexter what the hell happened. He, he just jumped me. And then Lundy gets the Tribune to publish the manifesto on page three instead of page one. Uh, without using any names of the victims. So it's a small win for the team at Miami Metro and maybe the FBI. And then Deb... Deb reminds Lundy it's actually 1 p.m. time for lunch. And Deb starts to open up to Lundy. Calls him a Zen master. 
And then Deb kisses Lundy. And Lundy is very happy about it, too. And then they eat lunch. Dexter gives Cody words of encouragement before he presents. Lila's buyer pays her eighteen thousand for her, her her sculpture work of whatever it is. And time to turn to page three. Or actually, this would be page three. And then Lundy figures out that the what the the Bee Harbor Butcher wants. All, is all this confusion about the manifesto. Typically, he's always been a quiet person, and now this. The Bay Harbor Butcher is using all the ways to get uh, law enforcement talking. Lundy figures out that the Bay Harbor Butcher is law, has a law enforcement background as he hits all the major themes, political, environmental, and religion. Dexter ignores a call from Lila. Lila decides to light her... Her sculpture, statue, whatever the fuck you want to call it on fire. Guess she doesn't uh, need the money, apparently. That was were my words. And then Cody actually invites Dexter for ice cream after the presentation. And Rita says, yes, Dexter can come. But then Dexter finds out about the fire at Lila's and goes over there. Lila tells Dexter that she won't... That uh, he won't leave or go anywhere. Like, so ask him, can you say that you won't leave or go anywhere anymore? So, like, promising him, her that he won't leave or go anywhere. And then the episode ends with Dexter noticing that Lila got her light fixed. I'm not sure if that's any significance. Like, if if her light wasn't really broken, but he, like, looked at it for a while and it just didn't make sense to me. So if anybody has any analysis on that, if that's supposed to mean something completely different... But Dexter, like, looked at it like he was surprised that the light was fixed, I guess. I don't know. That's just my thoughts. So that's the episode. As far as the score of this episode, where there was a lot of interesting things happen. Deborah and Lundy, or Deb and Lundy are a thing, I think. Dokes gets headbutted by Dexter and then gets uh, suspended. And just all the other stuff in this episode. Lila lighted her house, her, her place on fire. I'm going to give this episode a 9.1 out of 10. These season 2 episodes are so entertaining. Uh, as far as the the villain or random character that's in the episode, well, we didn't have anybody that Dexter killed. We had Mr. Wilson. He's kind of a whiny, criny guy. Of course, his stepdaughter just got murdered, but we don't know what happened to her. They didn't investigate the case. All it was is a focus on him, but when we find out he's innocent... They don't go back to see who done it. So as far as Mr. Wilson goes, as somebody, he just cried a lot. I'll give him a score of 2 out of 10. Again, he's not a, a criminal. I just want to give him a score and uh, let you guys know that my friend Michelle is absolutely obsessed with him. Even though he's really old now, but she uh, absolutely loves him, especially the very first Pet Cemetery. And then my character of this packed episode... I really wanted to give it to Dokes, but I know Dokes will be the character of the episode pretty soon here again, but Special Agent Frank Lundy figured out the manifesto. He got Deb to kiss him, and he was just awesome. He he got the Tribune to only publish it on page three and leave out names of the victims, so Frank Lundy is the character of the episode. So... You've heard what I have to say. Now it's your turn. I know I've rambled for about 13 minutes and 50 plus seconds. Um, if you're a fan of Dexter or Dexter New Blood, or if you like stuff on JDev TV and you want to help me out with the confusing YouTube algorithm, make sure you smash that like button. I see three likes on every video of Dexter. Let's get that doubled to six at least. Every little bit helps. It makes the videos play more when people search for these things. Uh, if you want to share this video with anybody or any of your social media platforms, that would be awesome. Don't forget to sound off in the comment section about what you think about this episode. Tell me what your score is. Tell me your favorite moment. Tell me what uh, who would be your MVP or character of the episode. And rate Mr. Wilson, even though he's not a killer, just on this year, he's the random character thrown in this episode. But I want to know why they didn't find out who killed uh, his stepdaughter. That's very interesting. Who else would have it have been? And then last, but certainly not least, unless it happens in the next episode. I don't think it does, though. 
Uh, don't forget to hit that sub button. That's the most important thing. Subscribing to the channel helps the channel out. Join the team. Show your damn support of being part of something special. And JDev will return. Unless I get on Dexter's table. <laughs>